Okay, y'all. Uh, good morning, good morning. It's uh, it's Friday. Uh, they were calling for rain today, uh, and we really need it bad, as everyone knows. Uh, but I already knew I wasn't going to work today. I had some other stuff I had to take care of, some personal stuff, uh, and I need to get the skid steer ready for uh, you know the brush cutting job on Sunday. Uh, I'm not working today. Uh, well. <laughs> I got some stuff I could go do, but I don't want to because I want to. I want to make sure that my guys can stay busy enough. Uh, and well, if you're an employee of a guy like me, where you know you just kind of uh, just started out here and everything, and well, it's just a terrible luck, really. Uh, you know, with the with the drought and everything. So we don't have this drought. Me and my guy, we're busy as all get out, man. Uh, like I said yesterday, I've lost probably six grand or so, uh, and still counting. Uh, and we haven't got rain yet. Uh, right now it's 75 degrees, uh, and they're calling for rain today. You know, uh, and so I already knew that I wasn't going to work today unless something just, you know, some skid steer job came up or something like that. I do have a job I need to go look at, uh, a grading job, and that's stepping out of my comfort zone. Uh, but I know that I need to go do that because, uh, well, grading can be really complicated. You don't know what you're doing, uh, and you don't have a lot of experience uh, grading. And uh, there's two different types of grading, if you ask me. Uh, you got very precise grading, and then you know where. Uh, somebody's got a flat front yard and you need to try to get a little pitch in there see i don't like doing that kind of thing same way with the lawns and everything i don't like doing hardcore precise stuff though grading excuse me has to be somewhat precise but when customers call me about grading jobs they're usually talking about where some, they, well you know some grinder came in there and ground up a bunch of stumps and now they want to you know that kind of thing that's pretty easy to do uh now, if, I guess if you're doing new construction stuff, uh, the grading would be, uh, you know, well, it might be a little bit easier, uh, you know, the, the hard grading. Uh, now, once you get the structure there and then you kind of just do the finishing touches, uh, then that would be uh, what, uh, well, I don't really like being up close to, to a house or up on somebody's grass or anything. Uh, not with a skid steer. Um, so uh, I got a, a, a lady calling me out of Peachtree City. Says she has some trees taken down and she needs some grading and, and up behind her wall. And, and see, all that right there is, uh, I'm going to go look at it, though, just so I can learn. But, uh, and I guess right now, with it not raining, I, I guess that's, I mean, what better time to do grading jobs? So I'm going to have to open my brain up to more grading work uh, instead of, you know, what I'm used to, you know, brush cutting, power raking, and, um, you know, grinding and mulching, whatever. Uh, so I don't really know. Uh, well, I just don't, I don't know, man. I just. I'm in a, I'm in a, I, I don't want to say I'm in a pickle, but I'm in a little bit of a pickle here. I just hired a new guy, you know, uh, after the other guy quit. And, and of course, he comes on, you know, and it ain't his fault. Uh, he comes on and, and, and we're doing, you know, we're doing the properties, uh, you know, and, and we're, we're, we're making money. I promised him a certain amount of money. And, and then we run into the driest summer that we've ever had. Uh, to me, I, I can't remember a, a drier drought uh, season uh, that was worse than this year. Not that I remember. Uh, but see, that puts that puts me in a in a bad spot because, well, my guy needs to make a certain amount of money to 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 be able to dedicate himself out here, right? And he just started. He hasn't even uh, been here a month yet. Uh, or oh, right at a month. Right now, y'all, I'm gonna be honest, man. I'm just trying to, to, to be little Bo Peep right now. Try to get through this this season uh, without without losing my back. 
uh, well, I just want to get through the season without losing my damn shirt, you know. Um, and we're doing okay, but I'm not making the kind of money I was making last year, the year before, the year before the last. Well, this is going to be one of the worst seasons that I've had since, uh, well, it'll be the worst season that I've had since I started doing the YouTube. I think there was a couple bad seasons, you know, when I first started where, and that's like that with every, every business that starts. But right now, I'm just trying to survive because if I continue to pay out and we don't have any work, then and it doesn't and we don't and we don't get any more work then everything i pay out is a waste even though the guy's worth whatever i'm paying him don't get me wrong uh he's worth that and then some but if the business goes out of business or gets to the point of where i can't afford to pay out then nobody has a job anyway so you know we have to weigh that man uh you know i do you can't, I don't know, you just can't promise somebody, you know, uh, full-time work, you know, uh, when we don't have any rain in this line of work. And, I'm, and that's what I'm always, and that is a good segue into what I'm always talking about. You know, you got to be smart with your money when you're making good money. I, I know that, that that needs to be a freaking slogan or some shit. Uh, because if you're not, and I know a lot of guys are feeling it right now, y'all guys can leave me a comment. I know a lot of guys are feeling it. They might not be feeling it as hard as I'm feeling it, but I think Matt MG came in there and said he lost like thousands and thousands of dollars, you know. And once you, once that drought, once that week goes by, that month goes by, you can never get that money back. Even though you might not lose the customer and it ain't anything to do with you or your work performance or whatever, once that month goes by, I mean, you can't get none of that money back. And now the likelihood that you're going to lose the customer behind that, well, that's not going to, that's probably not going to happen because if you ain't cutting it, ain't nobody else cutting it either, you know. Uh, so that's the only silver lining, if you will, to the whole thing. Uh, but if all you're doing is mowing grass, And I mean, I'm sure it even affects some of the fertilization people too. Because uh, I wouldn't want anybody to put chemicals on my yard right now. Uh, and I certainly ain't want nobody to cut the grass. I mean, everywhere I go, I'm seeing yards that we do, and they're like, man, it's been three weeks and they ain't, they ain't, they burn up. But I'm kind of curious. As to, you know, I know there's a lot of guys that do weekly in my area, right? And, you know, earlier in the season when I was talking about, you know, it's hard to make a living, you know, in my area doing them weekly that, you know, as far as I knew, I stand corrected. Apparently there's a lot more of that going on than what I knew, right? But I'm wondering why the why none of those guys are coming in the comments now, and, and and let's talk about how is it affecting you now? How is the drought affecting the weeklies? I'm telling you how it's affecting the bi-weeklies. It just seems like some guys want to, you know, when I say something that they don't quite agree with, they want to come in the comments and and be bold and be, you know, well that ain't true. And sometimes it might not be. Sometimes I don't. I'm, sometimes I'm wrong. I mean, I'm, I'm my bad. I don't want no trouble. But it's funny that they don't. They're not coming in the comments now. When it's, it done got real. It done got real, real. Well, right, they ain't got time. They're too busy mowing. Mm -mm, I ain't buying that. I just ain't buying it. I know my area, and I'd be very surprised if weekly guys are doing anything. But I, how would I know that? I don't because I don't have not one weekly customer, but I have had weeklies over the years. And when I had weeklies, whether it was a good season or, or you know, water, uh, you know, rain, good season or not, rather I had, uh, uh, you know, one or two weeklies. I, at the end of the day, well, no, I've only had 
one weekly the whole time I've been in business. And I did it for about 12 years, and then last year they moved, and once they moved, I didn't want to do it no more. And that's because, uh, well, I didn't, I didn't want to push the backyard no more. And you didn't need it weekly. <laughs> that's a big, and they were, and they were uh, irrigated properties. So, and it still didn't need it weekly. I, sometimes you need a little more than others, but I mean, we just go over there and just mow it, and then as soon as things got kind of tight, that'd be the first. Those that'd be the first ones I skip was the weeklies. But like I said, we haven't had this kind of drought in a very long time. I, I can't remember ever having one the whole time I've been in business. Not usually one or the other will have one mid mid season, uh, and then we might, uh, and, and and then it'll be good the rest of the season, but I'm telling you right now, where I'm at, and this is South Georgia, south of the Atlanta airport, where I'm at, if you don't get no rain in September or late August, you're done, man. I mean, it, it, it gets really bad here uh, because what happens is even the, the, we all know that the Bermuda grass is, going, is, is laying down for whatever, you know, because it's that time. Uh, laying down a little early, I'll agree, but without no rain, that's what happens. It's gonna lay down. So, <clears throat> yeah, the Bermuda that grass is already starting to lay down, and Chad talks about that in the Green Acres uh, videos that he does. And I'm gonna touch on the subject that he touched on yesterday about the mowers and new mowers and all, uh, but. If we don't get rain, last year, not last year, but year before last, I did the numbers, and we had a great summer, right? We, 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 we grinding it out, me and Zach, uh, and, uh, well, it was just me and him. And we're grinding, and then, uh, you know, a, a couple of showings of the Budweiser. But we, but, but, but we were grinding out all summer. And then bam, but then we didn't get no rain at the last week of August, no rain in September. And then by the time we got rain, it was the middle of October, end of October. And by that time, all the, the field grass that everybody dogs me out for cutting, <laughs> it was not growing anymore. And from September, give or take, to Thanksgiving, give or take, that's, what, that's the bread and butter of everything is the weedy grass is the is the you know the grass that ain't uh turf that ain't bermuda or st augustine uh fescue or not fescue you know uh any of the turf grass and so you end up losing thousands of dollars those last two months of the season and it it, it, it kind of burns and stings a little bit more than just the money because that's the time when it's cool enough to where you can really get out and and get your grind on you know, and you can do uh, tree work and everything, or tree trimming and everything. But if it don't rain, ain't nothing, <laughs> ain't nothing growing. Ain't nothing, you know. Everybody kind of just holds still, and that's what I'm gonna do. Uh, you know, being uh, being the business owner, I'm just gonna I'm gonna have to. But we we got work, but uh, we're we're trying to slow road it a little bit. That's why we only work three days this week. Um, you know, that's I mean. That's just the reality of it. What we're dealing with this this year. So uh, I did a little clip. Thought I was going to do a little video on on changing out the the high flow on the Kubota on the seventy five three, but I don't have the proper wrench, and I got a set of big wrenches. So well, it's good to know people, right? So I'm I, I'm I just pulled up to my mechanic shop, and. Uh, I'm gonna get the proper wrench, and I don't know uh, if I'm if it's gonna you know I may have to take that whole I call it a manifold I guess that's what it is that whole manifold off and turn it upside down to be able to get to the high flow right, because it's all the way in and the top piece I'll show y'all when we get when I get back to the house uh, but that's mandatory so. 
And I don't know if I need Teflon tape on these or not. I might, the way they leak, man, I might go on and do it, man. Because it just seems like, the, you know, those things leak like hell, man. Uh, I'm going to have to order the, uh, the, the single one, too. Uh, any of you guys know on, on well, I want to show y'all something real quick. So, y'all see the, these right here? that and that, that that stops it from popping off well what's it what what it also it makes it extremely hard to uh get it come off because you got to line those things up see and if you got to line them up while everything's hot and everything it's, it's a real pain in the butt to get it at all um do any of you guys just grind those down to where that's that uh ain't a ain't a ain't an issue y'all see what i'm talking about the little ball there now you can't grind it off right there but when you hook it up it comes out and it comes up a little bit and you can grind that off um i don't know but uh i'm gonna go in here and see what i can get with the mechanic and see what uh we can come up with on uh, different ways he might have some of those uh well he's got every tool there is i mean <laughs> I mean, you know, and I can borrow any tool that he has, you know, that he ain't using. Uh, but I try not to do that. I don't like, I don't like really doing that. But, uh, okay, y'all. So I'm out here in the shop and uh, I'm hoping that I can get this thing off. Uh, I might not even build, I might have to take this whole manifold. That's what I call it anyway. I might have to take that whole manifold off. Is where... Well, <laughs> this right here is a problem for me uh, because you can't get in there. Uh, I went and tried to find, well, I showed y'all what I got. So let me, so it's one and five eighths. And if it ain't positioned in there right, I'm gonna have to take everything off of here. Uh, it shouldn't take that long to do that, but I don't know. Uh, even if you take this thing right here off, right? The whole thing. And it's not that hard to take off. You just, a couple of half inch uh, bolts there, and then a couple of five eighths, nine sixteenths right there. And then you gotta get, take these off. And you know, not, not that big of a, not, you know, that big of a deal. Uh, but, well, these are gonna have fluid coming all out of them. Uh, But at the end of the day, you know, see that, look. This is the right size, but you're not gonna get it on there, see? I need something that thick. Maybe a little bit, I mean, I'm almost. I could probably, you know something? Does that turn? I could probably grind that down a little bit and I might be able to get it on there. I need for this to be thinner. If that was my tool, I'd grind that down and make it thinner. I would, but it ain't my tool, so I can't do that. All right, y'all, I ain't sure what I'm gonna do here, but we'll figure it out. Okay, guys, so yeah, um, I'm running into a lot more issues with this than I thought it would be. Uh, I'm gonna try to talk with the fan going because it's, well, it's, it's 80 degrees in here. It ain't real, real hot. Um, okay, so this is the weirdest thing. And uh, let me get my gloves. See, I got problems, man. So this right here is the wrench I borrowed from my mechanic. It's a one and five eighths and it actually fits because what's right here is what's right here. And it actually fits on there. Perfect, right? It's one and five eighths, okay? So I bought, I was gonna take this back to my mechanic. And so I went on and bought me a one and five eighths, right? Because I was right there by Napa. So here's a one and five eighths I bought, right?
Look, it doesn't, it doesn't want to go. So, I don't understand that, man. And that's a one and five eighths. And it will not go. Uh, yeah. So, one and five eighths. This is one I borrowed from my mechanic. But look. You see? This right here is in the way. You're not going to get to, even if you take, even if you take this off, it ain't going to change anything. So, now here's the one that I bought. Look. Now that one will go in there. But it won't go on the damn thing. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to grind the inside of this a hair and a hair. And just until I can get it uh, to fit that. Uh, I also have... This. Yeah, that, that you can get that on there, but you can't get it on there with everything's in the way. So that's what I got to do. So in order to do that, y'all, we got to what we got to do here. Okay, uh, we're gonna go on and undo the electrical, right? There's just two bolts holding that on. Just take this whole bracket and just grab it back here and put it back here somewhere, and just zip tie it to that for now. Uh, I can't believe this is the only way. This is the only way I can get it off, man. I can't, I, I mean, this is a lot to do. Uh, then I'll back this one off, back the two big ones off, right? And then just unbolt it from right here. Now I don't wanna do all this first, because then it'll be moving, you'll be putting stress on this. I need it to be firm, sitting still, and uh, I may have to uh, back this arm right here off. I did uh, uh, when I, uh, these were dripping uh, when I first got the machine and I just had, they just needed to be snugged down. In order to do that though, I had to move this. Oh my God. I'm down. I'm down, man. Okay, y'all. I got bad, bad, bad news, man. Bad news. Uh, yeah, I got bad enough news to ruin my whole damn day. I can't believe it, man. So I put pressure on it, right? show y'all what the hell I put pressure on it and the case drain busted out man look at that ain't no fixing that I gotta have a whole manifold man I don't know what would cause that 
but uh, as soon as I put pressure on it and turned the blades on, fluid started coming out. And I just looked and, and the whole plug, uh, gonna have to have one of these too. So, I don't know, man. I don't have words, man. Uh, this thing, I'm gonna have to replace this. So, well, at least I know how to take it off. Tell you what, man. That's so disappointing, man. I damn near want to cry, y'all. For real. Oh, my God. This is about... Because this is the second time I done put this man off. I'm probably going to lose this job. But I, no matter what happens, i got to get it fixed. So i got to keep my eye on the ball. Uh, I bet you this thing right here is stupid expensive. Uh, I want to get it and... Uh, I'm not going to take it off, man. So yeah, uh, I'm at a loss, man. Uh, it looks like I didn't screw it in tight enough. That is a freaking huge mistake, man. You know, I mean, a huge mistake, y'all. See, I'm showing the ugly because this is, this is one of the ugliest things I have ever done. And there's no telling what this thing costs. I guarantee you this thing, you're not going to be able to get this for less than five or six, seven hundred dollars. It might be a thousand dollars for all I know. So, I can't use it. It looks like I didn't, I, like I didn't tighten it in uh, far enough. Oh, God. Yes, it, it can always get worse, you know. But I'm going to go on and I'm uh, I'm gonna go on since I got it. I know what wrenches to use and everything. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, take it off, man.